Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! My name is Dragon the Wolf Fuzzbottom Jr. and these are some of my patrons! Nicole Spicer, Snow Hazard, Lit Dragon, Wario Land Gold Pyramid, Ella Enchanted, and a special thanks to my special sponsor, Theo Vellum. Now, as we get this game here loaded up today, I would like to request that you let me know what you think of today's video. And if for whatever reason you don't like today's video, then please, let me know why. When we last left off, we found out where Sam I Am is located. He's up here, in that little house-looking thing in the mountains. Let's go, go ahead and, um, go ahead and, yeah, let's go see him. Because apparently he's one of the descendants of the legendary sages. But he's not one of the sages descendants that the people of Ark and I'm... Whatever his name is. I don't know. It's late at night. It's like 10.23pm. So I'm going to be just a little bit loopy here. And forgetful. And I don't know words. How did you hit me? You, you snuck up. You are sneaky. Screw you and your sneaky brethren. There, I stunned you, and then killed you. Anyway, that that happened. That that totally happened. Oh, then there goes my fairy. How unfortunate. All right, I need to wake up more. Kill you. All right, run around as a rabbit. I am totally awake. I am totally aware of everything that is going on around me. There's a statue over there. There's also a building up here. I could go the long way around, but I'm just going to jump down the ledge instead. Alright, we're wasting time. Let us talk to this old man. Well, this is a surprise. I didn't expect a monster to speak to me so politely. I am indeed Saha Sahasrala, Sahasrala, the village elder and a descendant of the Seven Wise Men. Well, I'll be. To think a little rabbit like you is searching for the Sword of Evil's Bane, and yet it is no ordinary weapon. Legends say only the hero who has won the three pendants can wield the sword. And yet, you still wish to find it? Now, let's see here. Yeah, or of course. Nah, yeah. Very well. If you are sincere, retrieve the Pendant of Courage from the East Palace. If you bring it here, I will tell you more of the legend and give you a magical artifact. Farewell, Link. Cool. We're going to learn about stuff. I like legends. I like Zeldas. Put them together, you get legends of Zeldas. And there's multiple Zeldas, apparently. There's also multiple Links. Or so, uh, so I've heard. Uh, I could open this up later when I get the thing that he's going to be getting me later on this episode, but heck with it. I want this stuff now. You got some bombs you can pick up and throw a bomb in place. Press the A button. Hmm, you know that uh, instructional text would place the A button probably isn't necessary. Uh, Ryu, Ryu. Ryu Suda. If you need more space for text, for your custom text in this ROM hack in which Link is a rabbit, just take away some of the text that is used for instructions on how to use items. I mean, not like the complete instructions. We can go ahead and get told that, hey, we can use bonds by placing them on the ground. We just don't need to be told what button to press. So yeah, we're looking for things so we can get the uh, thing. We're looking for pendants. I think. I think that's what he said. Which way are we going? Check the map, and... Well, there's the first one we're going after. However, there's two more in this world. One of them's down here, and the last one is up here. And eventually our goal is that thing in the upper left corner. The Master Sword. We need all of these pendants in order to get that for whatever reason. Uh, what do I have as far as other items go? Let's use the bug catching net. Can we hurt enemies with the bug catching net? No. No, we cannot. That is good to know. It works in Ocarina of Time. Oh, wait, that's the bottle. Oh, crap. 
Oh, thank goodness for the shield. The shield apparently is blocky blocky. I could use blocky blocky. Ignore you, hop down here, and we'll make our way towards the first dungeon. Ignore you as well. You, on the other hand, I can tell are going to be a pain. Oh, wait, wait. Sneaky, sneaky. Into the first dungeon we go. Uh, let's see here. We want to go through the middle. However, just real quick, let's check the other two sides. Nope, don't want to go on that side. That side is all broken and stuff. Uh, I'm sure I don't need to actually explain why we're playing as a rabbit link at this point. We're three episodes in. If you don't know why Link is a rabbit, well, just watch the first couple of episodes. Don't worry, you have time. I'm only uploading this once a week for Ella Enchanted, who requested that I let's play A Link to the Past as a Patreon request. I want this. Yay! Totally worth it. Ooh, and there's a bit of money on top of that. Because this world's economy is broken. Which is probably why you don't actually find a whole lot of things to buy. Because it's like, what's the point? I mean, I did get this here nifty little bottle with a bee in it. You know, I'm gonna need to use that thing. At some point in this dungeon, Mr. B is going to come in very handy. Anyway, technically this is the second dungeon of the game. The first one, well actually technically it's the third dungeon in the game. The castle, then under the castle, and now here. And these guys are annoying because they jump. So you know what I'm going to do? Sick a bee on them. Yeah, you can't run from that, can you? Make sure I get my bee back before he flies away. He flew away. I wanted to use him for the first boss. Uh, well, whatever. If I had to guess, you can't use him on the first boss. Maybe for the second boss, though. That's too bad, though. I was really hoping to keep hold of uh, my bee for a lot longer than that. He was going to be like the mascot of the game. I mean, never mind the fact that I'm playing as a pink rabbit. He's just a main character. Get the map. We already know what the maps are. Although I haven't quite gone over the map yet, have I? So we've only got two floors in this dungeon. My fleshy box is the general grid section where I am. And in there is a little fleshy dot where I am specifically standing. Uh, no, no indication of staircases, which is a bummer. However, in that space in the middle, where that orange space to the left of my fleshy box, is the big treasure of the dungeon. Most, if not every dungeon, has a big old treasure. I'm gonna say most, because not the first two. I mean, I did get a boomerang in the first two dungeons somewhere in one dungeon or the other. Point is... Dungeons have treasure. You see that big old treasure chest up there? I want it. And eventually I'll get it. Hold on a sec. I feel like the way I went the wrong way. Let's try going back this way. I have a general idea of how to get through this dungeon. I've only played it a dozen times. Probably more. Because I've played like every version of this game come out so far. This is the first time I'm playing a ROM hack of the game, though. It's interesting. Man, I wish I still had my bee. Oh well, I can st not stun the skeletons, apparently. Can I at least kill them? Can I avoid running into every skeleton in the room? Okay, I can kill him like that. We're gonna hear some more beeping soon. Oh wait, never mind, got some health. I can promise you guys this, I am not good at this game. Especially when I'm playing at 10.32pm. 
Okay, in this room, I know exactly what I want to do. Screw you. Screw you. On all your dodgy goodness. And what do we have here? A key? No, the compass. You found the compass. Now you can pinpoint the lair of the dungeon's evil master. That's like the first time we've encountered the compass so far. So that skull represents where the boss is. Not an especially helpful item. They make it more useful in, well, every other game after this, where the compass also pinpoints treasure to some extent. Like in Link's Awakening, there's a... Um, it pinpoints when there's a key in the room. And then in other games, it actually just tells you where treasure is. By the way, normally there is a little thing right here, which I can communicate with Sahasrila with, and he will give me a hint about the dungeon. But for the sake of needing the dialogue space in order to add dialogue for being a bunny, those have been removed in this game. Which is just as well, the only people who are going to play this game are people who are already familiar with Zelda. You, open your eye. Thank you. Now you're dead. Those guys are tough. They only have one weak spot, and that is the eye. At this moment, killing them with pottery is the only way that I can actually kill them. Eh? It's locked. If you had the bit key, you might be able to open it. Okay, let's go ahead and make our way across over here kill you. Hopefully you don't respawn. Something just occurred to me. I want my net. Because if we drop down here, we'll find a secret room with a couple of fairies. I want to catch one of them. I want to catch one of them. I'm not catching either of them. That's okay. They respawn. Alright, there we go. Not gonna worry about the other. I'm saving that other bottle for Mr. B. We need to get him back, and there's plenty of him. So, here's a fun fact. Dungeons in this game are relatively short. Especially compared to later Zeldas, where dungeons take forever to get through. Like, there are times where you will spend multiple hours in a Zelda dungeon. It never really occurred to me that was actually the case. Oh, how did I miss you? Until I was watching some random YouTuber who was talking about his experiences with 2D Zelda versus 3D Zelda. And it was enlightening, I gotta say, because it's like, why do people prefer this Zelda over other Zeldas, like Ocarina of Time? Because Ocarina of Time is a lot more cinematic. Well, I tell you what, it's because the dungeons in Ocarina of Time are really, really long. And the dungeons in this game are short enough that you can just quickly go through them, and that sort of thing. You don't have to make a day out of it. Apparently, uh, there was nothing of worth in there except a key. Just realized I had a key. Anyway, being that dungeons in this game are short, most of them anyway, we'll actually be out of here before the end of the episode and back to Sahasrila. You know, I was kind of tempted to... Oh, goodness. No, 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 no. I was kind of tempted to just make a running gag out of getting his name wrong, but there's no way I could actually keep that up. Am I actually going to have to kill you, or did I miss an enemy? No, I actually have to know to beat this room, but I have to do this. How do- how? How do- how do I miss? There. That'll make those things bounce apart. And, uh, 
now I can get at that, which gets me this. It's the big key, the master key of the dungeon. It can open many locks that small keys cannot. By the way, let us talk for a moment about what these places are called. Dungeons. As I was loading up this program, it's like, I should probably close my chat program. What do I do? I don't. What was I saying? Something about dungeons. All oh, right, they're called dungeons. Now, I was aware of the Zelda games before I played Ocarina of Time, but they didn't sound very interesting to me because all people talked about was dungeons. And it's like, well, that doesn't sound very fun. I don't want to go through dungeons. I want to go through happy, sunny places, platforming all over the place and jumping on Goombas and turning into Tanukis. Even though Tanukis are not actually related to raccoons. It wasn't until I got an interest in RPGs, thanks to Mario RPG, on the Super Nintendo, that I finally decided, oh, okay, I should check out Zelda, because Ocarina of Time, Nintendo Power was actually talking about more than just the fact that there were dungeons, there were townsfolk, there were shops, it sounded like an RPG, and so I got it, and it was awesome. So, yeah. Really, the only Zelda game that consists primarily and almost entirely of dungeons is the original. So, yeah, pleasant surprise. I just wish there was a bit more plot going on in this game. Alright, you found the bow. You can shoot arrows until you run out. Oh boy. Who wants to make use of this nifty item that I just got? The bow and arrows. Um, it's not working out too well, actually. Cool item, I guess. Whatever, they all left. Moving on. <sighs> the bow and arrow is actually going to be the primary weapon to be dealing with those... Whatever those guys are. Those Armo statue-looking things. They go down with a shot to the eye. And it's actually a little bit easier to aim with the arrow than it is with pots. Or so it seems. Alright, I need some light. Let there be light. Get a little bit of health in the process. And, uh, I could use some extra money. Oh, I timed that bad. Oh, I survived. Uh, I don't know if these cause... Never mind. They do cause. They cause physical damage, and they also steal your magic. It's kind of rude. Wow, the door opened and an arrow appeared. I apparently even unlocked the arrow. Alright. Let's, uh, we're out of the dark room, so... Get that, because I'm sure I'll need it. How many of these arrows can I carry? I'm sure I can carry a bunch. Uh, right now, I cannot kill those bouncy things. I think 30 is the maximum arrows I can carry for the moment. Oh boy. Oh. Duh. 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 Alright. Hmm. Guess there was that switch. Alright then. Get my arrows back. And hit that and get out of here. I told you I've played this game before. Uh, not who I was aiming for, but okay. I like archery, by the way. If I am playing an MMORPG... Oh gosh, this guy takes two hits. If I'm playing an MMORPG... I usually pick somebody who can do long-range damage. Because screw getting hit. I'll just let some of my friends tank them. 
and I'll just sit peacefully in the background, not worrying about a thing. Until my friends die and the monster is finally deciding to target me. Also, aggro kind of sucks. By the way, these red guys are completely immune to pots. As you can see. If I'm not mistaken, I am at the boss room. Alright. Here we go! Ah, time for the first boss. And I started shooting those arrows a little bit early there. Just go crazy. Of course, then we get this guy. He makes things a little bit more diffi difficult. A little bit more difficult. But not. Get some extra health for beating the boss, and... We're done! I mean, we're not really done. We still got a little bit of time left in the episode, obviously. But hey, I got the pendant of... Courage? Yes, I got the parent in courage. Take it to Sahasrala. What kind of name is Sahasrala anyway? I was totally wanting to make a running gag out of getting his name wrong. And it's like, eh, whatever. I actually have a list of names that I was planning on calling him. Sandra D, Sarah Bellum, Sam O'Hare, Salad Dressing. Eh, I'm not going to keep that up though. Anyway, two pennants remain. All my stuff gets refilled, and we're gone. Now I just have to make my way back to Sahasarela. That wasn't on purpose. Hmm, let's see here. Nope, that's the wrong way. He's right down here. Oh, you got the pendant of courage. Now I will tell you more of the legend. Three or four generations ago, an order of knights protected the royalty of the Helia. These knights of Hyrule were also guardians of the pendant of courage. Unfortunately, most of them were destroyed in the great war against evil that took place when the seven wise men created their seal. Among the descendants of the knights of Hyrule, a hero must appear. I see. Link, I believe you. You should get the remaining pendants, and carry this with you. This is a treasure passed down by the families of the wise men. I want you to have it. Hey, it's a cape! Or boots. Pegasus boots. Now you can execute a devastating dash attack. Hold the A button for a short time. Like I said, Ryusuka, or Ryusuda, if you need a little bit of extra space for dialogue, you can uh, omit the message there to hold the A button for a short time. Like I said earlier in this episode, the only people who are going to be playing this game, this ROM hack, are people who are already familiar with the game. A helpful item is hidden in the cave on the east side of Lake Helia. Get it! Uh, okay, okay I, I'll get it. Let's see, with that out of the way... Let's check the map real quick. Yeah, no more pennant there. Two more pennants to go. Now I heard it's actually possible to get to the uh, to the pennant at the north at the north right now. But let me think here. We need a special item to get up there or finish it or one of the two, don't we? Yeah, we need to be able to lift rocks, and we can't lift rocks until we get an item on the southeast, west. In the desert down there. So let me think here. What else can we go over before we end this episode? But seriously, that thing looks like a cape. I mean, knowing it's a shoe, I guess it does kind of look like a shoe because it has that general shape. But the definition there is not 
it's not very shoe like I mean it looks like something you would wrap around your neck there it might even have a hood there on top uh, but it's a shoe anyway I guess that's pretty much it I feel like there could be more to go over but what what are you doing stop that I feel like there could be more to go over but I don't have anything else in my notes. Therefore, it is probably safe to assume that... Down at the bottom of the screen is all of my patrons. And next time, we're going to be going to... A dungeon. Yeah, there's not going to be much story, like I said. That's one of the things that kind of bored me about this game. But at least exploration's good. This guy here... He's talking about exploration, in fact. He said we're going to be going to some place to the south. Well, we'll actually be going there. Down there, right there, in fact, in the middle of the screen, is a secret item. And a pretty good one. Don't know that's effective against the boss in the next dungeon. In fact, I'm pretty sure it isn't. But at the very least, it'll be somewhat helpful. Well, we'll be getting that and heading to the second dungeon next time. I'll see you then.